you need to release the baggage. Okay? Absolutely. So there is a law, the, there's a law of oneness, meaning that the consciousness of the environment that you're around is something that you can adopt. Welcome everybody back to another exciting show, the About That Water podcast, where today I have a lovely guest named Sonia T. Well, she goes by Sonia T. Yeah, Anthony. Good my, seeing you. My my city college. What is it? It's not alumni, but what are we? We are we're like city college people uh, that people. went to school together, classmates. Classmates. There you go. There we go. Right. Yay. <laughs> Shout out to Baltimore City College High School. High school, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, I still don't have my uh I lost my city ring so long ago. I need to order I never another got one. one. Oh, you see? Wow. I never got one. Yeah. I was thinking I'm still thinking about getting one. It went up in price though. Like heavily. Listen, because it's worthy. It's worthy, okay? Yeah. Listen. The more we graduate, the more city graduates get out into this world the more we add uh some what is it called we add some value to our school how about there you go I like <laughs> it. yeah i had johan on here uh recently uh for season one yeah, on there? johan owen oh, yeah yeah go ahead you better keep us in the circle i know I right <laughs> We'll go back and watch that one. I'm gonna watch a lot of them, a lot of your podcasts. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Keep yeah. it on. Uh, what do you call it? Just binge watch it. Yeah, we got we got a lot of information on there. Um, went through quite a bit. So, but let, let's get to you. I mean, you know, talking about me a little bit. So the reason why I wanted you on the show was because you started talking about manifestation. And I was thinking about, I did a small episode on manifestation and how to be careful of what you manifest on because you might get it, but not the way you want it. And I saw your delivery on how to actually uh, manifest things appropriately and properly. So can you just kind of give everyone a little bit of background of what you do um, mm-hmm. as a business and actually as a service to everybody in the community? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So as a manifestation coach, my job is to work with the client to see where they their what their goal is right and we have a lot of different goals but we don't have necessarily the clarity of what we want and that pretty much helps it, it causes a lot of people to be stuck with their goals because they're they're focused on what they don't want and because they're focused on what they don't want they get what they don't want right and so we've kind of flipped the script or what i call shifting paradigms whereas we're, we're no longer in this energy of what you don't want. We're moving towards what you do want. And as a coach from the outside looking in, it's very clear for me to see what it is that what that person is wanting. And so because I can bring that clarity to that person's understanding or that perception and give them strategies on how to move forward towards what they want, they actually get what they want much quicker than they realize because now they have a different perspective of their challenges and they have strategies and they feel more confident to say, yeah, you know what, this is what I want. And that's what I'm going to open myself up to receive. So manifestation, it does include spirituality. It does take um, practicality of doing things that you have to um, put effort into. And when I talk about spirituality, that's on the receiving end, because sometimes the things that we want to come towards us is not within our control, but it is in the unknown control. And, you know, a lot of us have a different way of uh, describing the unknown as the universe, God, Allah, you know, there's, there's different ways of describing the unknown, but we have to coexist with the unknown to allow the unknown to give us what it is that we can't have that we don't have uh, control over. So I help people get an understanding of what they do have control over and what it is that they need to allow the unknown to do on their behalf, if that makes sense. 
It does. Okay, good. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much what I do. It sounds very simple. Um, and it is simple from my point of view because I've done it so long. It's just that people, a lot of people can't see what's holding them back. And I kind of got that, um, you know, that vision where I can just look at a person and say, I know exactly what, what's holding you back. And I bring the reality to the forefront because a lot of people are in denial. A lot of people are stuck on not getting what they want. And a lot of people are afraid of exchanging what they have for what they want. So we we attack those things and then we release those things. And then we get excited about the things that we want to come into fruition because now we have the room, now we have the, the mental space and we are excited, we're open to receive and it comes, it comes quickly most times. Yeah. I love it, I love it. Because I'm actually curious on how, like how some people are afraid to be successful. Um, I do hear that a lot. Like they're afraid to apply for a job because they feel as though they don't deserve it yeah. or they feel as though they're not a good fit for it without even trying. Yeah. So it's almost yeah. like they self hurting themselves before they even trying. Yeah. Self-sabotaging is a big, big thing. And they learned it from their environment. Mm -hmm. It's something that was um, embedded in them before they were even born. Most times, um, if you grew up in an environment, whether it's your childhood, your, your neighborhood or the things that you watch, um, this might be a little controversy, but a lot of history that we learned about African-Americans kind of put us in the mind frame that we are powerless. And because we have that, that mind frame already set, as we try to move forward towards things, uh, we find um, some resistance in getting to where we want because we have that mind frame that, or we have this unconscious belief that things are already in my way of getting being successful. So it feels weird to be successful if you never have it, like if you if you never experienced it, if you weren't born into an environment or um, um, you know a household where success was a norm, where success is all you talked about, then success can be a little scary. Um, and sometimes success is scary because it's just new. I've never done this before. I feel like a failure because it's unfamiliar. And so that fear is holding you back from just allowing uh, success to happen to you and to be okay with making mistakes. Actually, I like to kind of trick the mind to say, make mistakes on purpose. And if you give yourself the, the opportunity, though, or you allow yourself to be imperfect, it's like you are perfect because you're doing it the right, wrong way, you know? So um, if that, I don't know if I said the right way, but yeah, a lot of us are afraid of being successful um, because it's not even afraid of being successful. It's, it's so scary. I've never been here before and I don't know what to expect. So that is one of the one. Um, someone actually told me that recently. Uh, I think they were looking at a different position or trying to apply for something that they've never done before. And I was like, hmm, well, you're a new mother. You never had a baby before, but you're doing an awesome job. So why can't you do this job for yourself? You're doing it for another life. And they was like, oh, yeah, I never thought about it that way. And I'm like, yeah. Shift yeah. those perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. I'm not yeah, a song. So yeah. Watching your videos. Oh, okay. Come on now. <laughs> We're all truly manifestors, you know, and if we can help that person uh, to get that better perspective of you are a winner, you are successful, you are doing it right. And sometimes you need that person to come in and give you that different outlook. So, yeah, it's. It's, it's something that we all go through. And if you make manifestation a daily practice, you will be conscious of when you are like in this place of denial, of, not denial, but in this place of denying yourself of what you want, frustration, fear, your body will tense up. You will just know when you're in this space of resistance, right? And then when you're in this space of flow, you'll feel the whole body, your whole body, mind, and soul, everything would just be like 
oh, I feel safe now. I feel better. Like, yeah, you know, but yeah. It, so, it, so, it so what is uh, one of the things that listeners can do right now? Or what are the things that someone can do once they get home and in a quiet space, or even if they just at a dinner table that they can start doing to become a better manifester, if that's even a word? <laughs> Uh, one of the great things is, um, this might sound weird to some people, they may have heard it so many times, but meditation is really, really, really good. The reason why meditation is good, and you don't have to be an expert, and I will kind of go into what med- not med- what meditation is in my perspective, um, and why it's beneficial. Whenever we're in the space of like being relaxed and open, we are in receiving mode. Receiving mode is pretty much allowing things to flow, right? Mm -hmm. And allowing things to flow in your space or in your mind, you get a better understanding of what you're dealing with, right? So if you're dealing with, um, financial struggles and your intention for manifestation or your intention behind meditation is I'm going to sit here for five minutes to just clear my mind to figure out what I can do to be more successful with my money. I promise you if you sit for five, ten minutes and you just relax and you just allow things to come to you, you will see your issues, you will hear your issues, those thoughts will come to mind that, oh, it's because you're afraid to be successful. Oh, because you have a fear of releasing your money. Oh, because you don't don't believe or the, the, the way you were taught to handle money isn't really in alignment with your lifestyle. You'll start to like really have a better understanding of what's blocking you. And once you figure out what's blocking you, the next good thing that you can do is write it down. Because now these are the, the your, I wouldn't say challenges, but yeah, these are the things that you want to gain some clarity on, right? So if anybody wants to be a better manifester, the best thing, is to understand what your challenges are and then figure out what you can do about your challenges, what you can't do, what's outside your control, and then work on what you can do, if that makes sense. You set goals on what it is that you can do and everything that's outside of your, your control, you leave it to the unknown. And that's what I call it. Because one of the things that dealing with finances within my studies and doing multiple interviews with people and just talking to people outside of the recording is that it's usually a traumatic experience that has happened in around the seventh or eighth years of being on this earth. Um, And that's where most people usually kind of lock in with their, their finances. Um, because that's one of the things when I was listening to one of your episodes on YouTube, by the way, it was really good because it was talking about the traumatic experiences. And you also had some tips on how that people can actually uh, do to be beneficial and then also understand what their fears are and how to overcome them. Uh, so thanks for kind of going through that a little bit more uh, with the yeah. audience. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, so with the, the video and I, I might do a part two or do it over to be a little bit more clear, but we do want to look back on the experiences that were traumatic to us because the outcome, what happened really scarred us. And then if we think back to that incident and think about what we would have liked to happen, that's what we're looking for in our future. I wanted to be able to afford um, more food because maybe the person grew up that the food that they had wasn't maybe the the healthiest. 
And it made them feel like, you know what, now, right now, my eating habits aren't the best because I didn't grow, grow up with the best eating habits. And it's because we didn't have the money to get it. But now I'm in a position where I can create a budget towards better food and changing my eating habit. It's, it's that shift, you know, mm-hmm. I was broken back here. I didn't have the best here. This wasn't the best positive experience that I can have. But now I'm in a position where I can create that reality for myself and I can start, I can heal myself from that past trauma by pretty much giving myself what I never had, which is a beautiful thing. It's a nice gift that you can give to yourself or at least welcome into your life. That makes sense. It always makes sense. I always sense. gotta say that. <laughs> I need to talk to you that. Just- no, but it um because like you say, you can control the controllables. And if someone if it doesn't make sense now, it might make sense to them later. And that's the I beauty. Also, right. yeah, that's <laughs> one of my challenges that I will get better at communicating my ideas. The more I do it, the better I get. So, you know, I am always thinking about my audience. I'm like, I hope I didn't confuse you. I'm taking accountability for that. If I did confuse you, then I am going to do better the next time. So that's all. It it seems to be stuck in my mind. But one day I'm just going to be like, I know that made sense. I'm clear, you know. See? I'm always manifesting. I know <laughs> one day my right. video is going to be on point. I know exactly what to say, how to say it, and they're going to get it. And I'm going to feel so confident and, and really good about that information that I put out there because I know it was clear and concise. Yeah. There you go. Right. Clear and concise. Right. <laughs> we can't take distance from your teeth. There you go. My uh, my thing is actually getting better at asking better questions. So I actually bought a book called The Art of Asking. Um, so I'm trying to get better at, but, and that's another thing is um, with manifestation is that I noticed that you also talk about taking action and not just letting things happen. Is that a key thing that when it comes to manifestation? Oh yeah, big time. Big, big, big time. Um, I mean, there is a part of law, uh, a part of manifestation, again, is there's, there's this spirituality part, and there is a law of cause and effect. So um, pretty much what it is, is that you have to cause something to happen in your life. And in order for you to cause something to happen, you have to take action sometimes and sometimes you have to not take action and I describe that as masculine and feminine energy masculine is doing feminine is receiving and sometimes with the results that you want you have to put effort into getting the result consistently especially if it's a if it's a new if it's a new um habit that you're building in a new something new that you want in your lifestyle let's just say you want steady income from your uh from your business if you're a full-time employee you're a business professional working in a corporation and now you're moving into a new lifestyle of being a entrepreneur the habit is that you you have to consistently put something out there in order for you to get something back, right? Now, in order for you to get something back, you have to be open to receive it because a lot of people get frustrated about, well, I'm giving, 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 and I'm not seeing anything. Well, you're not seeing anything because you're probably not open to receive it. You're frustrated. And when you're thinking about receiving, and if you think about receiving and you think and you feel frustration, you're blocking it. But if you think about receiving and you're open to actually get it, receive it, then you're you're open to receive. It. I'm gonna let that go. I'm pretty sure somebody understood that. We, yeah. it's just you so, and I here. We we got this. We, it's just you yeah. and I. I got it. I understand. If you didn't get right, it, right. just rewind it, push the button back a little bit, and then listen to it over again. There you I'm go. Just gonna be confident in myself. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all we all we all a piece of work here. You know? Yeah, absolutely. A piece that, of work in the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So um, when it comes to your fears, what was something that was oh. a turning point for you that actually oh. was like, yeah, I need to sit down and meditate and I need to think this through to make it happen? Uh, 2019, May 15, when I quit my nine to five, and I entered into this world of being my own boss. Um, I told myself that I needed a new schedule that's going to allow me to put my my hobby, my my career as a manifestation coach, as a priority. And the day that I stepped in front of that camera, I was just like, "Who is that?" It was a big, 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 big fear of mine to be seen. And I'm just, I'm always like this incognito person. I like to be in the background, I don't know. Um, a lot of people think that I'm outgoing, even if you look at these videos, like, oh, you're so outgoing and fun. Yeah, that's my personality when I'm here, but <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, really, I'm a shy per- I used to be a used shy person. Used to be person. shy, I'm yeah. <laughs> I know, and then my friends are like, you're not shy, but that, you know, I don't want to be on camera. I don't, but I had to get rid of that fear of being seen you know, get over it. And it's just like, okay, I had to meditate on that several, several times and think to myself, okay, what is it that you don't like? I don't, I didn't like hearing myself on camera. It was just like, oh my God, how can people listen to me? And then when I looked at myself, I was like, is that what I look like in real life? Like, oh my God. So I had to pick this up and I'm still (laughs) still getting it together. Right. Right. Um, and then I had to fix my posture. I had to fix the lights, but slowly but surely, these little details started to come together, and it's still coming together. And as I fix one little thing, I got excited. Mm-hmm. And then as I fix something else, I got more excited. And I was like, "Oh, I'm on a roll!" You know, I'm just learning as, as I go. I start to tweak the little details and get better and better and better. I focused on what's going right and the things that I want to go right is my next challenge or my next goal to manifest. So I'm thinking about what you're talking about being in front of the camera is one of the things that took me so long to even put myself up on YouTube. So if you look at the very first, I think two or three uh, episodes I have on YouTube are just audio clips and that's it. Oh, okay. That's you know, I have start. a video. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. That's a great start. Yeah. Uh, and, you no, know, really, that's a great start. Oh, I didn't thank even think about Yeah. Well, I you mean, know, I'm, we can all, we got, we got plans for days, so. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> I when I started, I was, uh, I was just like, oh, I, I can't, I'm not, I, I was going, I was depressed. I was going through it. Oh, oh yeah, I was like, this is not it. Like, how am I going to do this? Oh, I was just like, this is not it. But, you know, here I am. Back who are you at comparing it. yourself to? Who, who was I comparing myself to? Mm-hmm. Oh, I just didn't like who I seen in that camera. I was just like, that can't be me. Oh. I just didn't like it. I just did not like seeing myself, hearing myself. I was just like, girl, you look a fool. So, um, <laughs> <sighs> and the setup, every, oh. It was so, it was a mess, but it was a beautiful mess. I was just like, I'm going to make this my art. I'm going to turn this into art. I'm going to turn it into something beautiful. I'm going to stop criticizing myself. And I'm still working on that. Um, and I'm going to make this what I want it to be. So that was a challenge for me because I always worked on other people's goals, help them with their goals. And at that point, it was such a big shift for me because I said all the work that I did for other people to help them get to where they need to be is the work that I have to put into myself. So I'm like, oh my God, like, how do I do that? Well, what were you, I had to think to myself, what were you doing? What were you telling other people to do in order to get to where they were going? Mm. So I had to really kind of figure out my process that I use for other people and use it on myself. And so Listen, Sonia T is going far. I mean, I'm not about to stop. I'm not, there's no end goal, but now I like 
now I know what my practice is and what I'm capable of. It's like there's nothing that will ever be able to stop me unless I have a child or family and I put them as a priority. But, you know, I don't think that's going to stop me. I just feel like I'm I'm getting into a role like this, this just mindset started. of mine. Yeah. This mindset is just like, go, go. You can do it. Make mistakes. Mess up. Look dumb. You be all right. You know? Yeah. Is there anything wrong doing it scared? Oh, you have to do it scared. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with doing it scared. The thing that I told myself is that you, the way you feel when you do it has to change because you can't always operate in fear. At some point, you're going to have to operate in confidence. You're going to have to operate in like this of being How, how I'm trying to find that word, just not giving a there you go. A pluck, you know, and just yeah. be like, whatever, just let all the concerns just let it go out the window and do let it do what it do. So you do have to shift a little bit, you know. If you're I used it used to take me maybe three, four hours to shoot a seven minute video because I kept doing it over and over and over and over. I mean, the clips would be like, oh, no, yeah. I can't stop. <laughs> oh, no, stop. Oh, no. And I was just like, this is not real life. I told myself, I declared to myself that one day you're going to be able to shoot this in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And one day I was able to shoot it in five minutes. The there next day I was able to shoot it in seven minutes. And editing. Oh, editing. <laughs> oh, my God. I was just like, this is not how I can't, I can't operate like this. There is no way I can create a flow out of being like stress. Yeah, mm -hmm. do it scared, but eventually you're going to have to shift over to doing it confidently, doing it like not giving a, you know. Yeah, that's so, why I gave up on editing on my videos. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, hey, we, okay. whatever you see is what you're going to get because one, editing does, I mean, it takes time. And for most of my shows are about an hour. So that means I have to listen to it at least. It'll take me about four hours because usually three times the amount to actually edit and then configure. And then like, hey, do you want to add this piece back in? Do you want to modify it, turn it black and white? Do you, right. this is just a video piece, but I'm not even talking about just the audio of just cutting it, making sure you want to put the commercials here or put the different segments in. And that's one of the things that if, again, if you watch my transition, I used to kind of put like a little snippet at the right beginning of the show and then I'll run the show. And then now it's just like, yeah, you just get the intro <laughs> and then you get the rest of the show, raw and uncut. I'm going Joe Rogan style, right? <laughs> and I tell you, Anthony, I had the, the platform that I have right now. Um, I started it. I started it in 2018, 2019, 2019. And the title of my platform was Spill the Tea, Sonya T. And I had put out, uh, the, the video was really cute. The, the, the way I had it put together, it was a really cute turnaround. I was like, you know, I like the intro. And then mm -hmm. I had, after the intro, I had like a little picture of me. And right, then right. after a picture of me, there was the, I was like, you know what? This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get in front of this camera. I'm gonna tell y'all what y'all need to know, what I think y'all need to know, and that's it. You know, yeah. it was fun making it entertaining, but it's a lot of work. So keep it simple, as they say. You know, there you go. but that's what <laughs> we got down to. I'm just like, listen, let me get in front of this camera, say what I need to say, cheese, mm -hmm. and that's it. So yeah. Now for we, the people we're here, Anthony. We're yeah, here. Yes, I'm yes, saying I see that. <laughs> you are if you out there, if yeah. you need some help when you're you're in your space of creating your 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 um what is it, your platform, keep it simple. I mean, keep it very simple because people are gonna listen to either way, whether you put on the fancy bows or if you put absolutely nothing on there. The main thing is the content. 
There you go. You got the content. Yep. You're good to go. Yeah, we can go days on editing, but we here to manifest. We're gonna manifest greatness. We've been ah. through a lot. Yeah. <laughs> day by day. Day by day. Manifest. And the big thing about manifestation is how you feel. That is the foundation of manifestation. And with my Instagram page, my intention is to help people to feel better, you know, um, which can be a little challenging. One, because of, you know, whatever your environment is, what's on your mind. But here's another thing that people may find a little strange if they're not into astrology or the spirituality realm that a lot of us are under the influence of planetary shifts that in a way that the way we feel is because of something that's not even happening in our realm. It's just because it's happening in the universe, you know? So when we talk about the Mercury retrograde, it's because the energies of that planet planet are, they're going at it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? If these big, huge planets are, colliding or going through their menstrual cycle, you know, they have a temple tantrum. It's going to affect us little, our little microscopic behind. We're going to feel the energy of what's going on with Pluto, Neptune, Mars, Venus. And sometimes I have to educate my clients that I know this might sound crazy, but what you're experiencing is because there is a shift going on in the universe. And let me try to break this down in layman terms that what you're going through is just the phase. At this particular date, like you said in the comment, on July 7th, the Mercury retrograde ends. And I tell my clients that what you're going through is just the phase. It will phase out at this date. And they're probably like, they 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 trust me because you know they know I'm into it. But it's like, oh, okay, it makes sense to them like, if something all of a sudden this argument starts to happen or there's a power struggle between you and your coworkers or whoever, or even if there's a sudden loss with your finances, it's because somewhere, it, sometimes it's because of what you're doing and sometimes it's because of the, the planetary influences that you're under. So um, when you're under that influence of frustration or um, confusion or power struggle, that's when these rituals or these, um, what do you call it? These habits come into play, whereas you go into your feel good bag and you start to pull out your book. You start to go walking. You start to meditate. You start to hang out with whoever. Um, I don't suggest certain things for people. You, you know, if you want to do a little smoky smoke here and you want to do your little drinky drink here, okay, great. Just don't overindulge because there is a certain time where people shouldn't over overindulge because it can end, it won't end well. And we see that in overdoses of drugs. I look into astrology. I, I like, okay. I look into all of that. And when I work with my clients, if they're comfortable, I can look into their birth charts and everything. It's the birth chart, but it's also um, there's different apps where I can see what's happening day by day. Gotcha. Um, and I can actually see what's happening month by month. Mm -hmm. So I can let them know, hey, give you a little heads up that this month you might not be feeling well. It's not because you're not doing anything. You're, it's not because you're not doing the right things. It's just because right now there's like a little crossing paths. So you might want to double up on eating well and get you know staying away from the whatever but yeah some people may may not realize that you're just really under the influence of the planetary energies that's causing you to not um feel well or you know and because feelings the way you feel is a big part of manifestation i have to let people know that there's other um situations that's causing you to feel what you feel so we work on what they do what they can do to make them again feel more uh, at, at peace at ease and to not get stuck on what's causing them 
frustration, right? Um, is there something that is kind of like a bottom line that some something that everybody can do, or is it kind of based on each individual for what they can do? Uh, it's based on individuals. It mainly falls down to uh, exercising, meditation, eating right, inter- any like entertainment, like what you watch. But everybody has their own preference of things. You know, with exercising, do you feel better weight lifting weights, or do you feel better better uh, doing yoga? Uh, with TV, do you like the the gothy? you know, like the crime things, or do you like comedy with music? What puts you at ease? A lot of people look at, listen to things that don't put them at ease. It kind of makes them go further in their sunken place, which is cool because you want to feel your feelings, but at the same time, you don't want to get stuck there because, you know, sometimes, again, you might get stuck in the wrong place and start to attract the wrong things into your life that mirrors your sadness. You start to attract things that mirror mirror the your frustration. And then you think to yourself, why me? I'm unlucky, blah, blah, blah. You know, you just feel like your life is not, it's not working in your favor when in fact it's, it's really you. It, right. It's you. It's, <laughs> it's you. Right. You know, I've even right. looked at people's, um, I don't know how to call it, what you call it, but I've looked at certain people's, day by day astrology update. And there are certain periods where you can be unlucky, unlucky with certain things. It might feel like it, right? It will say it, that you might be feeling unlucky at this time, but it would give you a time frame. Okay. If you know that's what you're up against, it gives you a better advantage to say, you know what? Let me lay low. Let me kind of stay let me not do this. Let me not do this because I don't want to um, shoot myself in the foot or whatever you want to call it. It's like Mercury retrograde. A lot of us who know about Mercury retrograde know not to travel, yep. not to travel too much. We know uh, not that to our buy electronics. <laughs> not to buy electronics, not to sign those leases unless you have already, you know, yep. been in the process of doing it. And people don't believe that, but I. I actually went against myself and took a trip during Mercury retrograde and I lost my wallet. Okay. Wow. I lost my wallet. And then another time, I think it was, I got into an altercation at the airport. I think that was around Mercury retrograde. And I was just like, I knew it. I should not have done it, but whatever. Yeah. It. I'm sorry. I'm good. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It is. Now I'm going to take you, I'm going to take you back a little bit. Cause you did mention about, people being born inside different environments and Mm -hmm. how that they cannot control that. But as most of the people that are listening now are new parents or, uh, or current parents. Oh yeah. That's, I think it was at least three, three people that have been on the show that had babies within uh, two years. So that is awesome. Congratulations to the new mommy, the new daddy. Yay. (laughs) And to the new babies. Welcome. (laughs) When they listen to it, that was, yeah. Right, we did. <laughs> Somebody's going to see that. It's like, oh my God, thank you. Right. They're going to see it. And they're like, oh, she congratulating her. Yeah, I'm sure. Or she or he. Yeah. yeah. Mainly the guys, though, because the guys, most of the guys, they'll come on. Uh, yeah, I'm about to say, this must be a guy platform because <laughs> most guys are into that money. Money, 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 money. Yeah. Surprisingly, talk- um, statistically, uh, over half of the listeners are actually women. Oh, cool. Yeah. Right. It's kind of surprising, but it's not. I'm kind of like, there is a, a big movement of women being more financially uh, stable. Or like, you know, They're more conscious, nat- yeah. Um, because they want to get to, yeah, they want to become stable. Um, and, or try yeah. to become, find different strategies with the money. Because the, uh, the husbands are like, you know, I don't care. I just want to make sure that I can get a beer or just come home and, you know, I want to buy my toys. I want to buy my cars and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, but going back to the children though, is there something that the parents can do to kind of take their children out the environment 
and kind of expose them to kind of help them cope, I guess you could say, with the manifestation. So instead of doing it in the house, is there anything that they can do? Be the example. Okay. Be the example. Um, be the example. And you, if you want to also put them in, put them in environments where they reflect where you want your children to be in the next five, 10 years. So if you want to travel to, or if possible, right, um, put them in camps or put them in schools or, or vacation, take vacation times in, in areas where you feel as though it's the environment, the energy of the environment is going to benefit my child in the long run. So um, I would just say, one, be the example. And then two, think about where you want your child to be in the next five, 10 years, you know? Uh, there's so many people on YouTube that are really setting great examples as to what, um, what you can do to help prepare your child uh, for what, whatever it is that they want for their baby. So it's all about intention. Like, what is the outcome that you really want for your child? That outcome is something that you start emulating right now. I saw a video where this whole do as I say, not as I do, that whole saying is about to be wiped out. I was never a fan of that saying, do as I say, not as I do. I'm like, uh, well, how'd that work? Because right. I'm just emulating, you know, I'm just emulating what I see. So one thing that my my sisters do with their with my nieces is educate them and use the terminology about finances. You know, mm. we're very transparent about finances. Why not? And there's no shame in it. If you're not where you want to be, okay, let's get there. You know, so using the terminology can help. Being very transparent about your financial struggles or your financial goals can also help. It helps the child to be aware of what they could possibly face in when they become an adult. Um, and again, you know, this is, I don't know how many people are watching that have teens or, you know, you said that a lot have had children recently, but it's a great time, whether they're newborns or even uh, teenagers to start being an example for your child, because that that's what matters the most, at least in my opinion. I like it. Like you say, you gotta have confidence in what you say, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, so right. that one, that that one, that was one hundred percent sure. 100%. I, I okay, didn't even say. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Let's gotcha. Because I'm I'm preparing myself, and I know there's certain things that I I am changing, so that my children grow up in an environment that I feel as though would prepare them for their their own separate life, you know? So yeah. yeah, I have to be, I have to be the example. I just have to. There you go. I, I, I like how we just kind of transition from strategies to talking about your futures now. I love it. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, um, because with, with me, I've already decided not to have children. So hence this whole platform started. Uh, and that's kind of <laughs> where this birth then began. So, and for me is to kind of make sure I manifest is that at least I reach one person. Uh, at least every episode is just trying to get them to understand like, hey, th what you think is impossible, it really is possible. And it's just got to take you that small step to get you to that next level. So yeah. I do, I commend you on really trying to push and put out there and manifest like, hey, I'm gonna have a baby, baby gonna do this. Now, the only thing about it, when does it come from manifestation to expectations? Because expectations usually get shot down a lot versus manifestation is kind of like, like how do you fill in that gray area? So ooh, expectations can be seen in two different ways. Um, expectation can be a demand. Mm -hmm. We don't want to expect something from someone. And then expectation can also be being open to receive. So okay. de for me, when you expect something, 
in terms of demanding something, you you expect your job to give you a pay raise. You expect your lover to love you in a certain way. You expect your children to do this. There is like a demand, right? Whereas if you say, I'm open to receive, like I'm expecting $100,000. You have no clue where that's coming from. $100,000, I'm open to it. I don't even care where it comes from. Well, you might want to care about where it comes from. I'm expecting $100,000 in cash. Legally. No harm, no foul, right? <laughs> You're not, no harm, no foul. In the most positive way, I'm open to receive it. Um, I'm open to receiving a husband or a lover or a child in addition. I'm not putting a demand on how it's supposed to happen. I'm not putting a demand on who it's going to be. I'm not putting demand on when it's going to happen. I'm just open to receive it, right? Um, once you get excited about receiving it, you know it's coming. Okay. And when you are putting uh, expectations on someone, you're not open. You're more so forcing or putting effort or, you know, like this requirement on someone to meet your need. And there's a different feeling when you require someone or expect someone to meet your needs. It's like this, uh, like the power struggle versus you being open to being served and being catered to. Um, so to can receive. it be as a small example, like you go into, I don't know, like a show or a theater um, and you bought like high in the back seats or whatever. And then next thing you know, they come up to you like, hey, you know, just because you came today, we're going to move you up three floors downstairs, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it can happen it, because okay. a part of your, you went in there open to, experiencing something wonderful like this is going to be fun this is going to be you're open you know you you're ready to be given something you're, you're not your hands are out but you're like ah oh, the portal it's like a part of you is like i'm i'm just here to like take it all in right mm. and next thing you know there's blessings 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 all coming your way and you're grateful, you're grateful, you're grateful, you're grateful, you're grateful. And versus you going into the theater and say, oh, um, they better put me like somebody I'm going to some, I know somebody's going to put me in, in that. Oh, you know, like expect, even it, though you didn't even that, pay for the price. Right. <laughs> a sense of Entitlement to what it mm -hmm. is that you want you know, that egotistical part of some of us. Whereas you owe me this because I want it. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Well, let's see what happens. Okay. And as they say, well, it's a sense of, I don't know if it's a sense of pride. Where I was going with this, and I don't even know if it fits, but pride becomes, pride comes before the fall where it's mm -hmm. like you feel so um this this sense of I have to win, I have to have what I want. Like nobody else matters. There's this like this snootiness, like I'm going to get what I want. And then next thing you know, everything kind of crumbles. A you know, you have to go humble yourself a little bit. But when you're open to receive, you are kind of open to the unknown or your expectations is like, let's see, I'm going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Like, this is going to be an amazing time. It, it's, it's the good energy, good vibrations versus the low vibrations. So it's, there's this two, two, <laughs> two different frequencies. Yeah. Were you in the band with me? No, I wasn't in a band with oh. you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. That was, that was you know, a whole, yeah, we had classes uh -huh. together. I said oh, okay. the band was a whole nother group of folks, you know. Yeah, that's, that was me. <laughs> I'm the geeky one. Yeah. Yes, we are. We're a different, different pair group, a different set of folks. We are different. Yeah, because I and think I during it. that time I had a AP Calc 
uh, doing that process. And come on, man, you better have AP Cal. Yeah, it was only ten of us in there. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, yeah, I can see why. Well, during our year, I mean, because AP was new to the city at that time. I was it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, of course, I knew nothing about it. Because that's just oh, not my thing. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> and it's, but it just reminded me of like how you said all the the boastiness and the sense of entitlement. And if you think about like all the cool kids were that, and then it's kind of like, well, where are they now? It's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. they're on the same area, same block, same thing. Right. Where are they? Where are they doing? Yeah. I really don't even, I mean this in the most respectful way. I don't care what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. different shows for different folks yeah, yeah i mean things things happen to them and, and yeah. i don't know i guess it comes and that's why i'm trying to think of the the manifestation piece of not the expectations but be specific of what you want when it comes to manifesting um, that's one of the things yeah you you definitely want to be specific but just not from who it's going to come from um an identity okay. of who it's going to come from yeah um, and I did a video of that before, but I took it down. And I, put it I, back probably, I know it's a it's a really good video. It's it's called Manifestation Made Easy. I probably do it again, but uh, it's pretty much being clear about what you want, knowing it's going to come in, but you just don't know how, when. And another great thing about manifestation is that knowing what you want but why you want it that Mm. is so so huge i saw a um i saw a post i think it's her name by gala darling she is one of my biggest inspirations um she does eft tapping and that's another spiritual practice which is amazing but um she posted that if what you want if you want to, Matt, if you if you're asking for something, I forget how she said it, but pretty much, if you couldn't post what you manifested, would you still want it, right? So, we live in a culture where it's impress. Okay. We 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 do things to impress other people or to get attention. It's like you know, but if you got a new house and you couldn't post it this house that you want and mm-hmm. you couldn't post it, do you still want it? Because that's kind of deciphering between are you wanting it for show or do you want it for your own pleasure? Right. You know, so um, fashion. So I just want to put that out there. I just want to put that out like there. That. I, I like that. I really do yeah, like that. I have to find it. I forgot. She worded it so well. But I was just like, yeah, because I can tell when people are wanting things just for an applause to for their own sense of, I can't find the word, but it's for show. It's to impress other people. It's to get people to look at them in a certain way. And if it works for them, it works for them. But I'm just thinking to myself, is that truly, really what you want? Are you satisfied? Are you content? Mm-hmm. Because it seems as though that it's coming from a shallow place, basically. But that's nice another story. And I work with clients too. I tell I, I tell clients about that stuff. I say, listen, I hear where you are, but I'm gonna tell you what I see, and I'm very, very honest, and I can be blunt. But um, and I'm working on being sensitive in the midst of it. But when when I make it clear to you what a person's clear, true intentions are, I help them realize that what you're intending is not going to get you what you want in return, which is this. It's like they want to be spiteful. They want to hurt people. They want to um, they want to be revengeful. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to show you I'm going to pretty much try to hurt you for hurting me or whatever. Mm. But I'm just like. You're continuing this pattern. And if somebody doesn't break this whole pattern of hurting, 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 it's just going to continue. So somebody has to break that pattern. And because you're here, I'm going to help you break the pattern 
if you want to, but I don't condone in this whole spiteful stuff. I just, you're not going to get what you want, what you truly want when you're really focused on the, the wrong things for the, doing the thing, doing the wrong things for the wrong reasons. So do they, it goes back to the environment piece that you mentioned earlier. I know we talked about with the kids, but now as an adult, um, to the point where is it's, you want to be successful around the people that doesn't seem as successful. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if you all of a sudden win a million dollars, somebody else would like, oh man, that's great. That's so great for you, Sony. You've been trying so hard. All right, cool. What's going to be your next level down? Now that you got a million, all right, where, where's the 10 million at? Where's the 5 million at? You know? Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think of, do you, at that point, when they find that more than, I'll say maybe 80% of their close circle is actually feeling some kind of way because it oh. wants to talk about it. Do they actually got to start uh, swapping those people out for people that are actually are supportive? And Absolutely. Actually that can <laughs> Absolutely. Do it as quick as you can. If you're watching this Show video, <laughs> you got you to gotta see you this video. <laughs> when I tell you a flight that has too much weight on it cannot take off. You need to release the baggage. Okay. Absolutely. So there is a law, the, there's a law of oneness, mm-hmm. meaning that the consciousness of the environment that you're around is something that you can adopt. Like, let's just say if you are at a football game and you you're not rooting for any either team right Right. you're just going to go to a football team and you so happen to go on the Ravens side right you're not a Ravens fan but you you happen to sit on the Ravens side Everybody that's around you is cheering for the Ravens. Mm -hmm. What are you going to feel like you should start doing? If you haven't, you're probably going to start cheering for the Ravens if you haven't decided like what team you want to go for. You're Mm -hmm. going to go with the mass majority that's around you. I need to give another example. Um, But what's that saying? When When you're in Rome, you do what Romans do. When you are in a certain environment, you start to adopt their level of consciousness, which doesn't necessarily mean that their level of consciousness is something that's going to be beneficial. When I started to learn more about energies, how I feel, what people were doing, a lot of people in my circle, I no longer talk to. We're cordial. And if they see this, they already know. I already talked to talk to them about it. We're just not on the same page. Mm-hmm. And it seems as though because you're you're reading about apples and bananas, and I'm over here reading about whales and fishes, I'm coming here with a conversation about whales and fishes, and you're talking about apples and bananas, and I'm just like, we're just in we're just in a totally different place. And in order for me to take off on a business where I'm all about whales and, and fishes, I need to surround myself around more people who know more about whales and fishes, mm-hmm. you know, because there's nothing about apples and bananas that have can benefit where I'm going, where my mind is going. So it can be a little challenging to think to yourself that I need new friends or I need to change my circle because of a sense of loyalty But you have to ask yourself, what's your end goal? Like, what is it that you really want? What kind of life do you want? What, like, what surroundings do you want? So your environment does play a big, 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 huge role. Even on your social media page, like who's going up and down on your your, your screen? I have to mute some people. Some people I have to kind of block. I mean, it's just like, we are not on the same page. I don't even like, I can feel the energy from your your post. <laughs> I don't even like it. I'm gonna have to mute you. I just don't. Mm-mm. I'm sensitive about my energy. I'm mm-hmm. a manifester, and I'm sensitive about my energy. Okay. So. Mm-mm. Okay, Erica, I do. 
Right. I know, right? <laughs> Not the Erica Badu. Yes, right. but yeah, I just, I, uh, uh-uh. uh, and it has made a huge, huge, huge difference in my life. Now, do I feel lonely sometimes? Absolutely. Do I feel like did I make the wrong decision? Absolutely. And then I go back to the drawing board. Why did I do it? And if you feel lonely, then what's the solution? New friends, new people to come into my circle, new connections. Mm-hmm. And that might seem weird because it's like, who wants to make new friends? But I mean, we're always making new connections. It doesn't have to be a bestie, whatever. But if it turns into that, why not? But yes. <laughs> so out. Out. you don't have to cut them off or cancel them you know i didn't necessarily cancel or cut anybody off or maybe i have i don't know but it was more so um and i'm okay because i had to choose me first mm-hmm. i have to choose me because when i was in this space of learning something different and i realized my environment wasn't a reflection of what i was learning then it was just like I had one lifestyle over here and then I had another lifestyle over here and who I had become didn't fit where I had just came from. It's like a 16 year old trying to wear his three year old clothes. It just don't fit. You could be uncomfortable. You, you can't even put, put it on. Up. I mean, you, <laughs> 16 you year old even, three. <laughs> yeah, it's like it can it right. can it even like, you know. And the reason why I say that is because childhood friends, the people that you grew up with, different stages of your childhood friends, your, t- your teenage years, your young adult years, your older adult years, they might not fit where you're going or where you're at. And that's not a bad thing. It's just that you want to connect with more people who can relate to where you are. It makes life a lot more enjoyable, right? Because you could talk about the same things, you can learn different things and you can enjoy the same things. It's about that relatability and things of that sort, but let them go. go. I mean, just create some space, you know, just find what you have in common. And with, with the the group of people, if there's a common space that you can connect with, cool. But if there's nothing that you can connect on, create some, create room for new connections. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Because it's the same yeah. thing like how you do with your social media. If you don't like something, you just say, hey, you know, this this is how I used to listen to music. I don't listen to this music anymore or I don't listen or watch these videos anymore. I'm going to just like uh, don't want to see these anymore. And I did a full yeah. video on how to block that out, too. So that's all good. <laughs> yeah. Great for you. And it can be it can be hard for people to uh, to let go. And then some people it's really easy. But, you know again, what's the intention? Like, what is your reason for doing it? And we have people like myself who was a people pleaser and I'm coming out of that where it's like, well, you know, I knew them for this. And I'm just like, I'm a manifester and I'm sensitive. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm sensitive about my energy. And I had to think to myself, do I feel good about this? Does this light me up? Does it fill my cup? Do I feel like I'm at home? I'm safe at peace? If not, and it got to a point where people won't even contact me because they already know. Sonya's not, I know Sonya's not going to go. She's probably going to say no. She's probably not going to be, you know, I have to teach people what I'm into and what I'm not into. And I learn what they're into and what they're not into. It's just a matter of respect and boundaries and all that stuff. Yeah. And it, it goes back Let to... Let them go. <laughs> it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, which is uh, not shooting yourself in the foot early. Because you can still ask, like, they could still technically still ask you. You might say no, but maybe this one time you might say yeah, just because. You know, you might be That's free true. that one day to actually do it. Or That's true. Do That's it. true. Yes. Let your energy tell you, yeah. you know, energy won't lie. And and again, um, that kind of goes back with your intention. So if you're you're wanting. It depends on what you want, really. It comes down to really, what do you want? And some people can't state that people, some people are not clear about what they want. It's very difficult to, to gain clarity about. I, I don't know. I, at a crossroad. 
well, let me help. You. Go to my website and I will um, help you figure out what it is that you want. And sometimes there's a there's a there's a compromise. You know, you can there's a middle ground that you can have what you want and you know have allow the other people or the other half to get what they want. So yeah, it can yeah. always. Um, I think there's a saying like you can have. You can have it all, but just not all at the same time. Oh, I like it. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely. That's it. That's 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 it. All right. I like it. Mm -hmm. So before we get to the uh, last four questions, is there anything else that you want to leave the audience with today? Um, know what you want and why you want it. That is key. Hey, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> that is key. All right, the final four questions. Are you ready? Sorry. <laughs> you can tell I ain't do this. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what does wealth mean to you? Wealth? Mm -hmm. Oh, wealth is health. Uh, just, right. yeah, wealth is health. Mental health, emotional health, physical health, spiritual health. Uh, mental health to me is being able to put your mind at ease, at peace. Emotional health is um, doing things that help you feel good emotionally, of course. Physical health, giving your body the movement, the, ten the, the TLC, the tender love and care. Get yourself a massage. Do some stretching. Go lift some weight. You know, go outside and get some sun and just relax. And your spiritual health is to get in connection to whoever is your higher source of power and create that relationship, you know, create that relationship. Know that you have someone that's working with you. Don't feel like you're doing it all alone. But yeah, create that relationship. So that's what wealth is. All righty. <laughs> What is your favorite financial book or non-financial book? Think and Grow Rich. Get the book. Hold on. Which one though? Because I got both. So I have Can these. two of them? Yeah. It's Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. A Black Choice? Yes. And oh. then there is, uh, get the other book. Uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill. That's the one I listen to. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Grow Rich. Hey, it, it is a really good book. Like it is book. good. Yeah. It's very, it, it's fundamental. And mm -hmm. once you figure out what your niche, what it is that you want to do, that book will get you there for sure. And your girl's on your tea. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, what did you learn from your worst job? Ooh, from my worst job? Not to manipulate people. Mm. I was in, in telemarketing mm -hmm. and not to take advantage of people. Um, I just feel like that is the worst thing that you could possibly do because you're pretty much taking advantage of someone that's in a space of like vulnerability. Mm -hmm. You're taking advantage of somebody who trusts you and you really don't mean well. Um, when I was doing these cold calls and asking people if they need this, need that. And if they say yes, keep going. I'm just reading off a script, reading off the script just to make what? Not even extra money, just to get a chance of getting extra money. So you're telling me you want me to take advantage of this one person just for me to possibly get a commission it's not worth it mm. it's not worth it i will no i'm not that i'm not desperate i'm not mm. if you don't mind me asking what were you what were you selling mm. if you don't mind me asking what were you selling on telemarketing um one time it was water filters another time it was timeshares timeshares are the worst oh yeah don't say no more now <laughs> it's a whole nother yeah. episode <laughs> no okay sorry <laughs> Yeah, we might have to have you back on talk about that. I couldn't do it. <laughs> now I'm not saying <laughs> I couldn't do it. Not okay. me. 
Now, do I find them beneficial? Absolutely. Um, I just feel like the people that I was speaking with, I know they weren't in a financial place or in a good place to buy a timeshare. And the things that I had to say, no. But I do feel like if you want a timeshare, absolutely. Go for it. It's a beautiful thing because that's probably a part of your uh, emotional wellness, you know, feeling your emotional wealth. Yeah, um, I'm kind of indifferent on timeshares, but you know, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, that. Yeah, another one. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Last question: Why? I mean, I don't see. I don't know why I put why. I miss. Needed to rewrite this. What is your best dish to cook? Oh, so I'm actually perfecting four of them right so yeah well because i don't know not all well i'll just speak for myself because i'm such i I used to always be in my head work 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 study 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 i didn't i my mental energy was depleted before i even ate right so Mm -hmm. i'm all i was that person that liked to eat out and then i realized that it was it wasn't healthy for myself right so it kind of forced me to start cooking and um one of the there's four dishes that i'm working to perfect the first one is kale and quinoa my mom used to cook this for my dad all the time i absolutely love it kale and quinoa um spaghetti and meatballs i know that sounds weird it's like how do you perfect that but i really want to 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 perfect the sauce i want to i want to make the sauce from scratch Mm -hmm. i don't I'm not getting into making the pasta from scratch, maybe one day as, you know, except, but um, like a really, uh, what is it called? Gourmet spaghetti and meatballs. That's the second one. Uh, Chicken fried rice. I'm going to get that thing down. Okay. (laughs) Because I live in Georgia, Mm -hmm. no shade to Georgia, but the, the, the Chinese restaurants are just, they are not. They are They're not, not the same like that up here. Nowhere near. Oh. I will catch a flight to go to Boston. <laughs> I would, because the last time oh. I had some, it was just on point. So I told myself, just go ahead and cook it, right? So chicken fried rice or shrimp fried rice is another dish that I am perfecting. And the last one is, oh, maybe I have another one. Wait, chicken fried rice. Chicken fried rice. Shrimp fried rice. Kale, quinoa, spaghetti and meatballs, gourmet, gourmet style. Um, And I think tacos, I know people are probably like, how you don't know how to take, listen, there's so many different versions of tacos out there and I'm working on finding my version of like my go-to tacos. So they are, they are light meals, fulfilling, and they're still healthy mm. and i might try to figure out another vegan dish so i'm just really pulling different dishes from different ethnicities or cultures um my family's from the island and it's funny that i have no island food in there i used to do um curry chicken and rice and peas but the dish is a little too heavy for me i know when you, you ain't what about all these what about doubles uh you know I, can you do yeah, those? I, I cannot, but my mom, so I don't know if anybody went to Carnival in Baltimore. I, they used to have oh, not in Baltimore. Baltimore. No, I went to actual Trinidad for Carnival. So excuse the world out of me. I'm oh, sorry, I know you had a great time. <laughs> that is now that's 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 the real carnival. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, my mom, she used to cook them from scratch from dough, you know, da da da. She used to make them from scratch and sell it at the carnival. But uh, I personally don't know how to make them. I'll probably do that once I get more fluent in the kitchen. But um, fried doubles, I mean, doubles, fried bake, saltfish, mm-hmm. all those Caribbean things, I will bring it back to my nice. household, to the kids, and my husband can have that and they can take that and pass it down. The, the, the bloodline or whatever so yes as the mommy as the cook and my husband I'm praying that he wants them and likes to cook we are going to pull some dishes from each one of our favorite 
um, cultures and perfect it and then pass it down. There you go. I like it. Yeah, we got to, uh, because, yeah, when I went from Carnival, came back, I the first dish I made coming from there was uh, corn soup. What? Ooh. Yeah. And since it's okay. a veggie dish, you don't have to use pork. Since it's a vegetarian dish, you don't have to use pork. Yeah. So, yeah. It's fulfilling, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's so good. Yeah. 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 I only made it three times. So. I don't know how to do it. What you say? I said I only made it like three times, but I need to make it again. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. yeah. yeah. Well, listen. If you if you feel like sharing a recipe, let me okay. know because soups are so fulfilling. They're just like it will make you. It will get you nice and full. You have all the veggies. It's such a great dish. It's such a great dish. I might have to put that on there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need oh, to put that on there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stick with my four right now. I think the ones I have now are good summer dishes or mm -hmm. year round dishes. And then as I get better, I'll add some more to the list. But yeah. Yeah. What it is. Right. right now, my but to answer your question, my favorite go to is the chicken or shrimp fried rice. Okay. It's so yummy. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So, where can people find you all over the internet? I'm Sonia T, the letter I M, Sonia S O N Y A T. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you want to be inspired, you want to have some support, some good energy on your timeline, if you need somebody to help you to clear your mind and get a better perspective of where you're going or where you want to go, girl, check me out. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Sonia. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Again, everybody. Oh, you are. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Anthony, and congratulations to your platform. Much, much success to you and your viewers. Oh, thank you. <laughs>